Hi, my name is Laura. For anyone who's new to this channel, I usually make videos about hiking and camping, but today is going to be something a little bit different, and I'm going to be sharing with you my story about how I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. So I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was 25 years old on April 17, 2019, so it's been just over 9 months since I've been diagnosed. So this all started for me back in January 2019. I had started feeling sick, I had like really large lymph nodes in my neck, I was tired, I was nauseous, and just generally had some flu-like symptoms, and eventually I started feeling worse enough that I went to the urgent care clinic. I described my symptoms to the doctor at urgent care, and he said this sounds a lot like an Epstein-Barr infection, um, which causes infectious mononucleosis or mono. So I had a blood test done in urgent care, and I found out that yes, I do have mono, so I got diagnosed with mono in maybe like the second week of January 2019. And then basically it was just on bed rest for a few weeks because I was just so tired all the time and I really couldn't do much. About a month after I was diagnosed with mono, I noticed I was really thirsty all the time. And it was just like a completely different um, sensation of thirst than I've ever felt in my life. Like honestly it just felt like my mouth was full of sawdust and I would drink like a big glass of water I'd finish it and honestly a minute later I would need to drink another one like my mouth was just so dry and I was so thirsty all the time and because I was so thirsty I had to pee constantly so I was probably going to the bathroom when I was awake like every 30 minutes to an hour and at night I was really thirsty too and I was probably waking up at least four or five times a night just to go pee so the thirst started maybe halfway through February and I didn't really think much of it. I kind of thought that maybe it was related to having mono. My brain was always so distracted. Either I was constantly thirsty or I needed to pee or I was tired and I'm doing my PhD right now and there were just a couple months where honestly like I could barely focus at all because I just felt so terrible. So the time when I was thirsty, I think I was drinking around five liters of water every day. I would drink a lot during the day just because my mouth was so dry and then at night I'd wake up having to pee all the time and at the same time I was still crazy thirsty so I'd wake up, go pee, drink another big glass of water, go to bed and then the next hour just kind of repeat the exact same routine again. And I was already really tired because I had mono so on top of that I wasn't really sleeping because I had to wake up so much to drink water and go to the bathroom and I just started feeling even more tired and then I started noticing I was having a lot of weight loss. I knew that weight loss was a symptom of mono but the amount of weight I had lost and just how rapidly it was happening was not uh, typical of mono and I was starting to get pretty concerned. So I called to make an appointment with my family doctor who was unfortunately on vacation at the time. So by the time I called and got an appointment it was about two weeks later so it was a um, in the first or the second week of April that I went to go see him. When I went to go see my family doctor, I told him, um, you know, I'm still feeling pretty tired from mono. I have this weight loss I'm a little bit concerned about. And I'm also really, really thirsty all the time and I constantly need to pee. And the first two things I complained about, he said, you know what, that might be just mono, like you're tired, there's weight loss associated with that. But that constant thirst you have, like, that is not part of mono. Like, I'm concerned that this could be something else. And he mentioned at the time that constant thirst could be diabetes. Which was something that had never occurred to me prior to that moment. <laughs> but looking back, it makes perfect sense. Like, I had very um, typical symptoms of diabetes at the time. But I was just thinking, because I was sick with mono, this must have to do with mono somehow. So he sent me for blood work and I got that blood work done later the same day and he told me he would call me if there was anything concerning and we would get to the bottom of it. So at 9am the next day I was at work and I got a call from the doctor and that's when my panic just started to, to settle in because I knew it wouldn't be good if he was calling me first thing the next day. So I picked up the phone and he told me that my blood sugar was really high and that my A1C which is a blood test they do to give an, an indication of what your blood sugar has been for like the last three months was also really high. And based on those numbers, he was concerned that I had diabetes. So he let me know that there was an endocrinologist that worked in his building and he had gotten me a referral to go see him a week later. 
and I just kind of had to stick it out for the next week. I let my family know that my doctor was concerned that I had diabetes. It was probably type 1 diabetes um, just because I'm pretty young and I'm fit and active so it wouldn't be like type 2 diabetes or anything like that. And I think my family and I were all kind of in disbelief, like I said it might be that, but I think part of me um, just didn't want to believe it was true, so I kind of just went on living life being like, this is, this is, it can't be true, this isn't right, I'm, like, clearly there's just been a mistake, like, <laughs> the blood work's wrong, I'll go and get it redone, like, we'll clear all this up and I'll, I'll be fine in no time, like, this, this isn't diabetes, there's no way I have type 1 diabetes. So on the day I met my endocrinologist, I brought my boyfriend with me because I was so scared and panicked. And the endocrinologist sat us down and basically, you know, looked at my numbers and said, yeah, like you have type 1 diabetes, your blood sugar is very high, and we need to start you on insulin today. And that was just such a shocking moment for me. I wasn't expecting to get that kind of news. And, you know, my boyfriend and I were just kind of sitting there. <laughs> in a state of shock and disbelief and just like we couldn't believe that this was happening and that this was real. He had um, like an insulin pen on his desk and he was showing me how I was going to use it when I went to pick up mine from the pharmacy and he told me about getting a continuous glucose monitor so I wouldn't have to prick my fingers so he was just spewing so much information at me <laughs> and I think I was just in a daze like I honestly can't remember the appointment very well because I was just so confused and upset and I was doing my best just kind of like not along and my boyfriend was really good because he was taking notes and just you know remembering these things because he I, he knew that I was not okay. <laughs> so type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. It isn't preventable and it's not curable at the moment and I'm hoping that'll change at some point in my lifetime. But basically, my immune system destroyed uh, the beta islet cells that are in my pancreas that secrete insulin. And insulin is needed um, by the cells in your body to take up glucose in carbs. So without insulin, the glucose just kind of pulls up in your blood and you have really high blood sugar. And even though you have all this glucose floating around in your body, your cells in your body can't take it up. And then you end up excreting all that extra glucose in your urine. And having all that extra glucose in there makes you really thirsty because your body's trying to flush out all this extra glucose because that high glucose can do damage to your body. So the day that I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, my blood sugar was 27 millimoles per liter. Um, for anyone out there who knows what like normal physiological blood sugar should be, it's usually between like 4 and 7. So my blood sugar was very high. And that's why I was just feeling so tired and lethargic and just generally terrible is because my blood sugar was high. My body was going through ketosis. It was breaking down like the protein and fat in my body. That's why I was losing so much weight because I was eating carbohydrates and my body just couldn't store them. So it was like eating nothing essentially. My A1C when I was diagnosed was 13.1% and usually in a person without diabetes that would be under 5.5%. So your A1C tells you what your average blood sugar was like for the last three months. So I think if my A1C was around 13%, that meant my average blood sugar for the three months leading up to my diagnosis, it would have been 18 millimoles per liter, which is very high. I left the endocrinologist's office with this stack of prescriptions. So I had one for rapid acting insulin, I had another for my long acting insulin, I had another for the pen needles so I could inject my insulin, another for test strips, another for a glucometer, another for like a lancing device, and then another for a continuous glucose monitor. So after the endocrinologist, I drove over to the pharmacy and waited for all my prescriptions to get filled. And at that point, I texted my family to be like, you know what, it's true, I do have type 1 diabetes, the endocrinologist confirmed it. Um, but I think that day I had a meeting at work and I told them all <laughs> not to call me because I was about to go to a meeting and looking back it was absolutely ridiculous that I decided to go to this meeting like I should have just gone home to try and process what was happening to me but in my mind I was like you know what I'm strong and I can do this like I'm going to work today you know an hour after I find out that I have type 1 diabetes which was a terrible idea because I was a mess. And at the end of the day, I went through and called my family, and they had called me just to see how I was and what did this mean for my life. And like on that day, I really didn't know 
what that meant for my life and all the other things I was going to have to do. And it was a really scary time and a really sad time. The way to manage type 1 diabetes is with injected insulin. So I take a rapid acting insulin for meals and then a long acting insulin that keeps my blood sugar steady for the rest of the day. I think the hardest thing about being diagnosed was learning how to give myself injections. And that first day um, that I had to come home and give myself one, I just couldn't. I had, I think, a panic attack. I was crying, I was hysteric, and I just, I couldn't bring myself to give myself that injection. And I think in my mind, giving myself that injection meant that I really did have diabetes. And if I didn't have to give myself an injection, I could pretend that this wasn't happening to me. So my boyfriend is such a wonderful person and he gave me all my injections for the first day because I just was struggling so much. I, c I couldn't bring myself to do it. And then eventually I became more comfortable with it and Nowadays, like, I don't even think twice about it. It's such an easy thing to do, but that was, those first few weeks, it took me so long to work up the courage to do the injections. So the week after I was diagnosed and I was started on insulin, I started to feel so much better. I had energy, I was gaining weight back, I felt like my brain fog that I'd been living with for the last few months was finally going away and I could, like, think clearly again. Around the same time, my vision started getting really blurry. And I guess it's a pretty common side effect of starting insulin when your blood sugar has been really high, but when you have high blood sugar, your body is just trying to get water from any source in your body, and one of those sources is your eye. So when you have really high blood sugar, um, it actually causes the water in your eye to decrease. So the shape of your eye changes and the shape of the lens in your eye can change, which leads to this really blurry vision. So there was about two weeks where I essentially couldn't see. Everything was so blurry. I ended up having to go to the drugstore and I bought like cheater glasses just so I could read the text on my phone. My vision was so bad I couldn't read, I couldn't watch TV because I, I couldn't see the picture. It was just one big blurry blob and like I, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't do work and I'm doing my PhD right now so that was just, it was frustrating because it just felt like so much wasted time. Like I just spent the last three months feeling terrible, I'm on this drug that's supposed to make me feel better, and now I can't really see. <laughs> so it was frustrating. So there was two weeks of that blurry vision, and then eventually the blurry vision went away, and I just felt fantastic. Like, I felt like myself again, which was the first time, and honestly, at that point, a really long time that I'd felt good, and it was just phenomenal to see how much my life had changed by being on insulin. It was great. It was really scary when I was first diagnosed because I just had no idea um, what my life was going to be like. I had to do all these injections, you know, exercising became a little bit more difficult because I had to keep a really close eye on my blood sugar and just eating in general became difficult. Like I take a lot of time to calculate the number of carbs in a meal so I can take the right amount of insulin and eating out or eating with friends or family can be hard if you didn't prepare that meal yourself and you're just not really sure what's in it. And I also have to check my blood sugar multiple times a day just to make sure it's in range, I'm not too high or I'm not too low, so I actually wear a continuous glucose monitor, I use the Freestyle Libre system which I think is incredible and it just makes my life so much easier to know what my blood sugar is because I can just use my phone, I um, have a sensor on my arm right now but you can't see it. But I just use my phone, I scan my arm, and then I know exactly what my blood sugar is, and it's so handy to have. Throughout this whole experience, I've been so appreciative and happy for all my family and my boyfriend and friends that have just been so supportive. They are just the people who got me through this. Everything's still pretty new to me. It's still been less than a year since I've been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, and I've learned so much, and I've done a lot of my own research, but I know that there's things I can't really learn uh, without experience and time, so I'm, I'm constantly learning new ways to, to manage my illness and overcome it and just do all the things that I enjoy to do without thinking about type 1 diabetes. And it takes a lot of work and there's a lot of trial and error. I think for me it's been a really big benefit that I'm a scientist because I'm used to doing experiments and I can, you know, systematically go through a checklist of things and just kind of like tweak things slightly until I figure out what works for me. And it's, it's good to have that kind of mindset. And to be completely honest, dealing with my diabetes diagnosis was kind of like going through all the stages of grief. <laughs> Where you're in denial and you're angry and you're sad and then eventually there's acceptance. But it took me a really long time to accept that this was my life now. 
So with that, I just want to say thank you for listening. This was a really difficult time in my life and it's taken me a while to want to talk about it. Um, if you have any questions about my diagnosis or type 1 diabetes, feel free to leave them down below and I'll do my best to try and answer them. If you're interested in seeing more videos about diabetes, let me know as well because I'd be interested in making some more. And with that, see you next time. Bye.